know, speaking of questions, if you guys have a QR code on your tables, if you guys have questions, scan that QR code, uh, and then those questions will fly into over there. And we're going to answer that in a bit for uh, our Q&A panel. Um, yeah, you, uh, you said the word disrupt. Um, how, how important is it to be able to disrupt um, a culture, whether that be a blue ice cream or um, some sort of viral uh, food concept. And um, and I know because, yeah, we live in this social media age, everybody, oh, it's for the gram, we gotta get it for the gram. How actually important is that? And I guess like a part B question to that is what are some sort of like misconceptions for um, a concept that people may think, oh, I have to make sure I have this or my concept will not work. What are some of those sort of like, yeah, like misconceptions or bad advice that you guys have maybe heard that is just not true? Uh, bad advice, I would say, doing, creating concepts just for social media. I think that's like short term, like very, very short term thinking. Yeah, my stuff, I think a lot of the products that I've released over the years, like they look great on camera, but at the end of the day, these, the product still needs to stand out, it needs to be great, it needs to taste great. If you're gonna, you're gonna come through that door once and you, you eat it, and if it doesn't taste good, you get that picture once you're out of there, you're gone, and word, word also spreads like wildfire, right? And I think the I think the early successes, especially with after the ice cream, was the product it was still a great product, you know, and, and also, Blue Ocean strategy. You know, we knew it's ice cream itself and colors itself would help, but you know, we decided to place it inside of a hot donut and you know, and just do something completely left field. But the product itself still tastes great. You, know, you get a hot and cold effect, and textures, and things that we were looking for, even though we weren't chefs. But those are just things that we were looking for in terms of like our general excitement. Uh, I hear a lot of people talk about we want to be the most authentic. Thing, or we want to be the cheapest option, or we want to be a better Shake Shack, or something of that nature. Uh, the, the problem with that is that those guys already dominate the game, so if you try to outdo them, they already have a head start. They're bigger than you. You're going to have to share the pie that we keep talking about. Uh, I think the better strategy, and what I've seen all the brands I've worked with that have become like global brands, have been they, they, they can't just be better. They have to be different. You have to create a different category. You have to be a category killer. For example, uh, way back when uh, the company I worked for, uh, they were the first to start the franchising program for Five Guys Burgers. At the time, it was just the cheap McDonald's fast food or the fine dining chef driven burger that was thirty dollars. At the time, there was no middle market. There's no fast casual better burger that we are just take for granted today. Uh, but but Five Guys created that their own category and. Even though I'm an in and out burger uh, like fan, uh, they created the, that concept and they dominated it. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, all the other brands that I've been able to, to work with that have like, taken off have always created their own category and they dominated. They are known for this, so Afters is known for that, Fox is known for this. So um, bad advice is, yeah. I, again, for Halal guys too, uh, when we first opened, we got so many complaints, like, you guys aren't like authentic Middle Eastern food. And I said, well, we were never, we never set out to be. We were just really good New York street food. No one can compare us to that. But if you try to say we're the most authentic Middle Eastern food, there are thousands of other concepts that can beat us on that. We're not trying to compete. That is not a game we can win. The game we can win is the most iconic New York street food. You can't take that away from us. So you got to create your own category. That's it's probably the biggest advice. Yeah. I would say for me in the past uh, few years would be um, growth, right? Because once you have an investor on board, I mean, all they want is scaling and growth. Um, but to be completely honest, I think when you have, you know you have a great product. You know that people come for it. I think the most important thing was to have a very strong foundation before you scale your even second or third So I actually have a, Cheesecake Factory, won't remember. Well, how many years did it take for cheesecake going from one store to three? 15 years. 15 years. Wow. So 15 years for cheesecake to going from one store to three stores. 
And the people don't realize that, right? Because they all see the big growth and all that. Um, and well, that's Howard, by the way. Howard Gordon, he uh, was on board Chief Tech Factory. And so, knowing that for a fact, you know, that gives us comfort to know that, hey, it takes time. Good things take time. And so a lot of, I see a lot of business owners really race to, like, oh, I need to open my second store, third store, of course. You know, take your time, really look back to your system, create good SOPs, create good company culture, and go from there. Otherwise, it's just really short-lived, I think. Yeah. Customer fatigue and everything like that, too. If you're growing too fast, you can see um, whether it's marketing can't keep up, infrastructure can't keep up, product quality can't keep up, a lot of those things. And, when you're scaling, you're trying to open places in different countries or different states. Like you need to still try to protect that quality and and, and the brand culture. Like trying to hold together brand culture. Uh, I've seen. I, I've been involved in that. You know, going from you know one to thirty stores. Like you, you definitely lose it. Like uh, you know, one store. I'm in the store every single day. Once you get to store 10, 12, 15, I can't visit every store and I can't see everyone's faces and touch and shake hands anymore. And a lot of that, you know, really falls apart. But if you do it right and you grow it correctly and you build the right team members that are basically an extension of you, you know, to to to, uh, to the staff, uh, just growing at the right speed, you know, uh, taking your time with it. I think you have a longer a longer reach with it. You've seen brands like that, you know, Chick Fil A or you know, In and Out. Like they, they really take their time on going to different territories and opening up. Can I add on that real quick? Yeah. Um, so another piece of bad advice that I get is that. Um, in my line of work, a lot of restaurant chains approach me and say, oh, we want to franchise this brand and we want to be like the next big thing and here's our plan and, and we actually want to raise capital and we want to go public. Um, and the problem with that is I think most people are just too focused on that end game. And when they focus on that too much, they care more about, just like going public has that pressure where investors, you're trying to please the investors now, you're not trying to please the customer. And there's like short term thinking. Uh, my advice, usually when I hear that, I actually just say I, I can't take this gig, I can't, I can't consult for you because they're too focused on short-sighted, uh, empty, like an empty skeleton of a concept. Most concepts that uh, have gone public, have gone international, the stuff that we work on, it's funny, the common denominator is they actually didn't even plan on franchising. They, they just focus on filling the marketplace need, doing it at a high level, and just being so damn good at what they do. That, that going public, raising capital, getting franchise requests, all that stuff just come naturally. Like, that's the lead domino. Like, that makes everything else easy. That takes care of it. And, and the beauty is, if you just take such good care of your business, you're so profitable uh, and, and you delight so many customers that you don't even need to go public. I, I love, um, if you guys know Craig Newmark, the, the, the founder of Craigslist, his, his, his uh, he runs like a he makes like six hundred million dollars a year just from Craigslist alone, and his, his he said famously, "Death is my exit strategy." Like he he can go public if he wants to, but he doesn't need to. There's no pressure. Um, so focus on your product and your concept, and make it so that you have options. You don't have to go public, and you can just keep it in your family and do generational wealth, uh, or you have other options as well. So um, yeah. Uh, don't don't be too focused on scale and the end game. Yeah. It's dangerous to compare yourself to other people too. Yeah. Because when yeah. you see other people grow, like I need to go that. No, it's actually if you really think about it, if you ask any one of us, we probably we're we're not netting that much. If you really think about it, mm -hmm. I think a mom and pop restaurant sometimes net even more, way more than mom. It's because we focus on something yeah. that we can't. So I don't I don't think people need to compare uh, one another. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we want to give some time for some of these questions that flew in. So. Uh, yeah. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed our video. If you'd like to support our channel, you can check out our Patreon or buy me a coffee. Be sure to also check out our Instagram and YouTube accounts and to comment, like, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.